So, hello one more time. My name is uh, Svetlana Zakharenka and I am one of the MGC school team members. And today I would like to play a role of main linking element during our presentation and also a background voice. I'm sorry that I couldn't share my camera because of some internet issues, but I hope that you will enjoy my background voice and uh, linking role to our speakers. So I am really happy to welcome you on our uh, community school open day and today I would like to introduce our first speaker, Kazimiras. He is a software engineering team lead with a huge background in software development and today his presentation will be about Java and he is going to uh, describe how Java is used right now and what you need to know to start with Java or to proceed in case if you have some experience. So Kazimiras, welcome and please start your journey. And hello, so there, there is no applause because we're online, right? Okay, hi, so uh, my name is Kazimiras. I sincerely hope everybody hear, hears me fine. Um, and I'll talk to you about Java, what you should know about it by now, after 30 years of history that it has, and where we're going with it into the future, right? So, really briefly, I mean, wait, what? Okay. Uh, briefly about me. So, right now I'm an engineer, engineer team lead. I code a lot, which I enjoy a lot. I used to be a project manager, an analyst, a QA. How did I go through all this is a separate long story, so I will not dwell too much on it. Uh, but briefly, what I really would like to do next is actually to know a bit more about you and actually who I'm talking to. So this is where Menti comes in, right? So if you can follow the link upstairs, or at the top, sorry, not upstairs, uh, and there's this small code, and if you could uh, like give me some feedback of what kind of auditorium I have, I would really appreciate that because that helps a lot with figuring out how the speech is going and how more much more into details I should go. So also I am aware that this presentation is going to be about 30 or 40 seconds ahead of time or actually delayed while you see it. So I have to fill in this time in some way. Uh, plus I guess this is the first time you're supposed to log in, so I will have to spend some time on it. Um, I don't even know, maybe I should actually just want. And of course, there's that, that one troll under the bridge who wants to check how we do Java in the school. Okay, welcome. I'm really happy to see your answer there. And welcome to the ones that were, were learning as well. Really happy to see you here. At least that's the idea that the majority of people joining could be the ones who want to learn things, right? Um. Okay, I might as well probably just move on. We can probably move back to this. About a year, like, I would really love to know how you come here instead of actual internship or a job after a year of learning, but I guess there are different ways that people go about it. Let's see. Okay, maybe I'll come back to this one. Uh, let's move on a bit to what we're going to cover today, right? So, really brief history of what is Java because I mean you have to know that if you're going into this field right and then another really brief overview of of what Java is and kind of features it has uh I can't go much into details because like each topic you pick up there is very it starts to become very technical very soon and you have to know a lot to, to get into it but just at least seeing and what's up with that I guess would be helpful and then we'll go into data science because everybody loves data science these days, except this is going to be some statistics, right? Because all data science statistics eventually. Uh, we're also going to be covering uh, Java participation in different domains where it's used. And briefly cover uh, where Java is going as uh, a language, what kind of ecosystem it has around it and how you can you navigate it. And then I will finish with some really motivational things about why Java really matters, right? Cool, so updates. OK, so I am glad to hear that the absolute majority of, of the ones answering is actually the newcomers, so I hope it will be useful. OK, just ruined everything. Thank you. 
<laughs> okay, let's move on. So briefly, history. Uh, so if somebody asks you about Java history and you can't name guys like James Gosling and Sun Microsystems who actually created Java, you're doing something really, really wrong. Okay, so because these three guys, eventually James, Mike Sheridan, uh, Patrick Norton, they were the ones who actually sat down with nothing besides really, really slow computers and actually wrote the first Java incarnation, which was called the Beam Project, also known as Oak at some point, but that's really long history. And the idea of that project was that it was meant to control a smart home. And if you can imagine uh, early 90s and smart home and what kind of cumbersome electronics you would have to carry around to control it, that was where Java was bound to work. The interesting thing is that eventually it was the internet and actually browsers and uh, Java usage in browsers that got uh, the language kicked into mainstream, so to speak, because the initial version was actually quite dead compared to it. Uh, so what Java actually brought to browsers was video things, voice things, audio things like interactive animations instead of simply uh, HTML things which were really, really static, right? Uh, so browsers that first picked up were Mosaic, WebRunner. Uh, there was this hot Java version called it at that time. Really had bad record with security for a reason because it was not doing security well. And eventually Netscape also adopted uh, Java Atlas as something that they can run. Um, didn't really work out, right? Uh, that's eventually was not how Java ended becoming uh, one of the mainstays in the programming language world. Uh, also, a point in history that you just have to know, Java is definitely related to coffee uh, because Java was the island where the developers had all the coffee, that they, all, all their favorite brands of coffee made. So this was really important. And also a short nod to JavaScript who kind of stole a bit of uh, Sun Microsystems marketing money and called, I think it was Lightning Script or something like that at that time, and they just adopted JavaScript as their default name because marketing budget for Java at that time was quite significant already. So that's about it with the history. Uh, the next thing is about features of Java, and um, each of those 12 bubbles that we have, so nice colors, etc., pretty much can go deep into each of them, right? So if you go, for example, to object-oriented, we can talk about inheritance, we can talk about interfaces versus uh, uh, kind of extension mechanism and whatnot. Uh, each of them is, is, is really deeply technical uh, and kind of, I got some feedback that probably went too much the first time, so right now I'll just, I'll just cover some select ones, right? So for example, secure. I mentioned before that uh, hot Java was noted as insecure one. Current uh, versions of Java is probably one of the more secure ones, uh, ways to write software, right? If you, for example, consider, con con compare that to something that runs directly in hardware, like uh, C++ compile code, there's a lot more uh, areas where things can go wrong in, in directly compiled uh, languages. Uh, everybody knows that, for example, Java is, Java is platform independent and you can port it and uh, take, once you compile Java things, you can port it anywhere, right? And that's really a nice feature which really got it going in a lot of worlds. And right now, there's a whole bunch of different languages which run on JVMs. And that this was directly something that was picked up from Java world and, and uh, interpreted as a good thing. Uh, all different kinds of things, for example, like definitely with this, for example, the point number 10, high performance, this is, uh, requires some comments because if you compare it with C++ or C or C sharp, it's not, right? Because they, they get compiled into really low level code and they work faster. But if you take something like Python, like uh, JavaScript, same, those are heavily interpreted languages. They don't get compiled before you execute them. So they, they run always slower, right? So there's like a lot of things that we can go in there. And I'm pretty sure that following uh, study uh, materials and, and the exercises you do, I, I, I'm pretty sure we'll cover a whole bunch of these things without exception. So let's, I guess, move on, right? And this is where statistics comes in because everybody loves data science, right? So there's 95% of enterprises who rely on Java as primary coding, coding tool, right? So pretty much you can jump into most companies in, on the market, especially the bigger ones like banks and, and 
insurance institutions or some bigger software companies that they do software, all of them have Java as one of their primary coding tools as a, as a bare minimum. Some of them to a bigger extent, some to less extent. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this uh, statistics, if you look at it, it also counts in all the ones that have those few small projects that are running in the background made by interns to handle, I don't know, like foosball table, booking things, etc. And they use Java. But still, what the, the, the point is, a lot of companies use Java, and this is a really, really good starting point to, to kind of get into, right? Uh, some more statistics because, you know, everybody loves it. Uh, this is actually a, a quick uh, overview of GitHub code repositories, right? So how much uh, code is written in what language in GitHub? Again, keep in mind, this is only GitHub, so we don't take into account private repositories. We don't, don't take into account GitLab and other kinds of things, but it paints a quite uh, clear picture. Like right? Java is definitely in the top five. It's moving up and down depending on time. And uh, Python is obviously number one because that's the whole new thing that everybody's trying to learn because for whatever reason, I personally don't like Python, but that's just me. Um, if we move forward, uh, this is, for example, the Kyobi index. Uh, it's also, Java is also quite strongly somewhere in the middle of the top five that you got there. It used to be top ones very strongly right now. This thing is, by the way, just to explain how it works, it kind of tracks searching uh, for different uh, content about uh, different languages across a wide variety of search tools, right? So it takes into account Google, Bing even, you know, uh, all kinds of different search engines. They try to kind of uh, figure out what people are searching for and uh, judge the language popularity based on that. Whether you accept it as a good metric, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's kind of to to uh, to a sort. On one hand, if people are searching for it, then it must be popular because they are using it. On the other hand, people say that, for example, only new people search for various things in 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 the Google or other places. So that might be an indicator that new people are learning, which is a fair point because Python is definitely being picked up by a lot of new developers who are just starting out uh, coding. And a lot of seniors, for example, use Java and they don't search too much. Then again, me personally, I search a lot, so your mileage may vary. Uh, so the next inter iteration, the next question is basically, now that we discussed languages a little bit, the features that they have, how many languages do you think a developer or should know, right? So let's say you're in programming for like five or so years. Like how many languages do you think would be sufficient for you to know to consider yourself a reasonably good developer, right? So you can just sit down and get things done. And I have an answer to this, and I even have some expansion as, as to why that is, but I would really love to hear uh, some feedback from the attendees. And this is again that lag that we have. Four, one, okay. All over the place, please. Okay. Okay. Come on, <laughs> I, I assume you're doing this on purpose. <laughs> Messing up all the statistics anyway. But okay, so I, I, I won't uh, stick to this. Thank you for the ones who actually selected three because that's that that's an answer that I was looking for roughly. And um, I mean, there there is a logic to it because uh, at certain time, right? So once you learn a language, the, you first focus on one. You try to get down to it, learn it reasonably well. Uh, it's something that you kind of go to interviews, do coding challenges on by default, and that's fine, right? At some point, uh, you risk lying behind with only one, right? So the next one will probably be something like SQL or some kind of scripting language because you need to use that for your build scripts. You need to use that for doing something tedious that you don't want to do in Java because Java, but remember, that's the default language you to learn, right? Uh, and the third one, it just comes around naturally because, you know, there's this one nice startup that you would really love to hop into and they're looking for developers in some, I don't know, Kotlin or Scal or something like that. And you're like into, you know, you have some spare time because you're young and you want to learn something. 
Uh, and this is a good 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 number to have. Uh, if you know at least three languages, then that gives you a baseline of understanding like what kind of strengths each language has. You kind of understand like they sometimes uh, do one things some things well, other things badly. Uh, you can choose one which is the best for your task. For example, like I would I don't know. Right now, there are ways to write some script uh, or, or script things with Java as well, right? With the later, later versions. But I am completely unsure why would you do that as opposed to using Go or I don't know or Python or or Rust. Oh, sorry, not Rust, but Ruby or something like that, right? They, I mean, they they just do it better, admittedly, and you can't really go around that, right? So. Uh, Another fact that you really, really have to inter take into account when learning languages, and this is like a, a very perfect illustration for it, and it's about the, like literally, you know, you open Reddit and there's this programming humor subreddit and they always bash uh, Java and they always love Python. And the fact is, all languages really suck for very different reasons, right? You definitely can find the reason why one is better th than the other, etc. And just roll with that, just accept it, it's fine. It's uh, the key here is to find the one that works for you, the one that works best for the task you're currently working on, right? Uh, so with that said, uh, let's take a look at what kind of like a leading languages are in different uh, in, in different domains that we will cover after this slide probably. So front end uh, is the JavaScript. I mean, or TypeScript if you feel like that's a different language. Some do, some don't, but. I mean, if you go to a company then do, and they do front end and they do, don't do JavaScript, uh, it's something really weird is happening there. I would probably question that choice. Uh, if you go with backend, right? Uh, again, JavaScript is there. You can't really go around it. Uh, Java is definitely there. Python, PHP, Ruby, a bunch of others are definitely in that market. Uh, if you go mobile development, uh, Swift for all the iOS things, Java is the default go to for all the things you do in Android. Uh, C Sharp is also uh, something that is used on iOS devices, so you might encounter that too. Uh, there are smaller things there as well, like Kotlin and some other niche languages, but I guess this is, these are the mainstays there. Give development. Uh, definitely C, C Sharp, especially if you're looking at the more uh, AAA level things, they definitely want the extra performance and are okay with some more complicated code. If you look at desktop applications, and this is where actually all kinds of, uh, you know, scientific things and small strips, small pro programs that just do the small thing that you need to come in. This is also where Java, C++, Python really rule the world and you can get and do that. If you talk about systems programming or other people call it embedded programming, there's C and there's Rust. I mean, there's a reason why uh, Linux kernel, which is the, the most down to the hardware level thing on a computer, is written in C. And the child is talking about migrating to Rust. But I mean, I would challenge you to find any way to put Java in there because I don't think it will work, right? I mean, it's a challenge, so feel free to try. But again, there's, there you go. Uh, so. As I mentioned, uh, we're going to be covering uh, several domains where Java is, is, is into, and I'll talk about the applications that we I found of interest in those areas. So we'll start with front end, right? As I mentioned, like it's it's definitely possible to do in Java, right? And there is like there were like several libraries and several iterations of, of Java. The very latest one is actually Java FX, which actually gathers some good words about it. Uh, but if we, if we talk, for example, about websites, uh, it's quite an usual thing to do, right? So it's 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 an would be an interesting choice. It is possible in Java, and, and there are frameworks which do that, but it's an interesting choice. So I would probably not expect to find much Java in the front end. Back end, oh yes, like anything you can imagine, and then some. Like literally, like if, if you if you have some task to do that. Do it distributed, uh, spread it out over different machines, uh, synchronize them, work together, make a cloud of it, uh, make an optimized, uh, you know, quickly booting, quickly shutting down uh, service to run. Java literally has you covered. There's a bunch of libraries, bunch of tooling, bunch of monitoring tools and solutions around that ecosystem. Literally, if I had to write a backend system, I would definitely go with Java. Your mileage may vary, right? But it's it's really, really one of the really heavy uh, stays in that market. So as I mentioned, mobile, I uh, really hope you like Android because that's the thing is it's written on, right? It's, it's Java 8 
a uh, bunch sure. of things around there. A uh, bunch of new versions have been uh, sent and created because of that, but that language needs to support. Uh, there obviously are alternatives, especially if you go into Android and this is just Kotlin, as I mentioned, and this is something that Google is supporting heavily because that's an open ended and uh, kind of language of the future or something like that that they mentioned. And the fun fact is if, for example, for example, you're using IntelliJ, you can literally transpile the code to Kotlin and from Kotlin to Java. It's like literally that close to Java. And it also runs on the JVM because, you know, that's what all the cool kids run these days, right? Uh, games, so in practice, not that much used, but for example, Minecraft, the original was written on Java, uh, RuneScape, the old school one was on Java, and there's a bunch of small, smaller, uh, more obscure ones that are there as well. But again, as I mentioned, it's not really a uh, very often practice. Uh, if you really want to do in AAA games, I'm sorry, this probably is not for you, so you probably should learn C, C++, C Sharp, or something along those lines. Uh, desktop applications. This is actually an inter interesting one because, uh, as I mentioned, uh, JavaFX plays a role here. And if you if you're somehow working at NASA and controlling a Mars rover, chances are you're actually using a Java written front uh, desktop application because that's how you call the role there. Literally, uh, if you, for example, don't play Kerbal Space Program, and you should definitely play that game. Uh, and you want to plot some kind of trajectory of your satellite in space, uh, Java also has you covered. They have an application, Deep Space tra Trajectory Explorer, where you can optimize that thing for you. Obviously, there's a bunch of tools written in Java for Java, like NetBeans, Eclipse, right? IntelliJ, Jenkins, GraalVM, etc. Right? Uh, so there's a lot of uh, special specialized applications. One thing that I meant, uh, mentioned before, but uh, forgot to add here, is that there's also a bunch of tools for working with uh, natural language recognition, for example, which is also considered kind of uh, desktop applications, especially if you're working in the scientific field. Uh, before Python picked up, uh, there was actually a lot of uh, data crunching things written in the uh, Java as well. So it's still there, it's still kicking. So if you learn that, it's also a possibility to work with. And finally, the original intent, the embedded programming or CTAM programming. So, you know, kind of like to how to control devices. Um, and the brief answer is that can your device run Linux? Because if it, if it can, right, and most actually of those small embedded things can, then you can run Java on it and you can write software for it in Java to more or better or worse extent, but it's kind of true-ish. Another fun thing is that, for example, like uh, my kids are going to be getting a Lego Mindstorm set this Christmas because they're grown up enough. And I will be getting it and it works with Lego Java operation system, right? So it's also a thing. Uh, one really interesting robot that I found uh, pro programmed with Java was Jitter. It's actually a small robot that is flying in the in International Space Station and it actually keeps it clean. It sucks all the dust. Uh, trash that it finds, etc. So it's like a really small, nice piece of uh, robot that they have there. Uh, this is dedicated uh, framework, which is the, uh, kind of meant to to minimize and make the uh, hardware programming in Java easier. It's called Micronaut. And the final nail in the coffin is basically Java is on all these SIM cards in your phones that you use. It's like literally you can't run away from it it's if you have the phone nearby you. And of course, I mean, you can have that virtual SIM these days, etc. But that's what the majority of phones still have uh, the SIM cards and Java is there as well. So with that out of the way, I really would like to hear like of all these domains, right, which we covered a bunch. Which is the one that you are most interested in jumping in? Because I know different people like different things. For example, when my wife was learning, right, she wanted to do to learn front end. I really wanted to teach her Java, but she wanted to do front end. So I taught her JavaScript, TypeScript, and React instead, because that's how you do front end by default these days. But uh, how about you, right? What kind of things people want to do these days? Okay. Backend and desktop. Good choices. I think you're in the right boat then. Let's wait for some more answers. Yes, I, I hope you like Android because if you don't, then <laughs> Java is probably not your way to go.
content. That's a mighty strange choice. Okay. And let me guess, uh, the person who chose games wants to, wants to write some Minecraft mods or something like that, right? I applaud that initiative, it's always welcome. OK, cool, but I get it here. I mean, I, I I am pretty sure that you're in the right boat here because I am pretty sure that uh, the course will focus heavily on, on the backend things and probably something that you can use on desktop, although I'm not sure. Uh, probably the ones who will talk after me can tell more about what's to be expected in each uh, section. We'll see. OK, but this is, I would say, very reasonable choices. Good. OK, let's continue. Uh, so with that said, like I uh, talked about domains, I, like, I feel that Java is a bit of a Swiss army knife of languages, right? It's kind of old. It has a bunch of libraries, a bunch of tutorials in, in a huge amount of areas and a huge amount of settings. Uh, and it, you, can, you can do things in really varied amount of places. And then at the same time, it's, you know, it's, it's a Swiss army knife. So if you have a good scissors, you, they will probably work better than the ones in, in Swiss Army Knife, right? If you have a can opener, it's probably better than the one in Swiss, Swiss Army Knife, right? But then you have to have those dedicated tools. If, you, if you're if you just starting, it's kind of hard to know all these tools. And so you have to stick with one. And this is, again, why I'm trying to advocate for Java, because this is a really good starting point, right? Um, well, the, there's a bunch of languages who actually learned from Java and adopted a bunch of things from Java, especially that JVM thing uh, and all kinds of different areas. Again, I can literally go into technical details, but they, they will just make you sleep, so we won't. Uh, but for example, la languages like Scala, Kotlin, Ruby, Clojure, those are literally languages who were born to run on the same JVM uh, with a bunch of things taken from Java and improved or, or kind of moved in different directions. So, I mean, there are definitely things that Java did really badly, and people learn from there, just like Java learned from different languages and introduced a bunch of things in, in it as well, right? And again, I, I mean, we could go, for example, into how Java introduced generics or how Java finally introduced the multi-line strings. And, and, but I mean, these are like uh, very technical things that will definitely make people sleep, sleep so I'll just move over. Oh, and yeah, then this is, this is probably one of the best slides I, I could find for, for this presentation. And uh, I'll, I'll give you some time to read through some constructive feedback that some guy, some really, really salty guy left on the Internet about Java. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I assume he loved it for some time until he hated it. But the fact here is that there's the, you definitely going to meet people in conferences, uh, you know, in meetups, in, in some other places who are going to hate Java, and that's a fact, and I can promise you that, and that's okay. That's, I mean, literally, right? I mean, the, there are fanboys of this, fanboys on that, and you, I mean, you can distinguish a, I would say, a grown-up, uh, mature developer by the fact that he's like, well, I would use Java for that and that, but not for that, right? So this is a reasonable response. This kind of response, this is definitely coming, you know, from internet when you try to bash something and you literally just want to, you know, crap on something because you can pretty much replace this Java with something else and it would kind of work as well, right? Uh, but moving on. One thing that is really gets people salty, right? Like the previous guy that we just uh, had, is that people write boring code on when they're doing Java? Just don't. Like literally, learn your IDE. It does and generates a whole bunch of code for you. It helps you. It like if you write something sim silly, just like take a look at that. that you know uh, this uh, light bulb icon. It probably has some good suggestion that you want to take and do. And at the same time, learn some new pattern that how things are, might be worked out and written in a more elegant way. Just do that. It's literally like if you general rule of thumb, Java has so many libraries and uh, help and tutorials available that if you're writing something boring, there's probably a tool for to handle that out of the box. And if you're questioning that, I mean, just look at the comparison of Java versus Python where they say that Java doesn't have string uh, functions galore. I mean, that guy probably never has seen Apache String Tools library 
because I literally was surprised when I saw that in comparison there. Anyway, so moving on. So uh, last topic probably is what's in the future for Java, and that's a really interesting one. Um, so I'm going to talk about a little bit about how versions developed and what's in the future. Uh, so roughly speaking, there were two parts of Java life. So pre Java, uh, Java 8, which were, were where they were applying actually, I would say more revolutions than evolutions. And uh, they were breaking things. The versions were released uh, quite uh, sparingly. So like first uh, eight Java versions, they went for I think 20 years or 20 something, right? Now since Java 9, where we are right now stand at Java 17, we have them released every six months and they become evolutions, right? Uh, this is also since Java 8, uh, this is about the time where that Oracle Google legal battle happened. And if you haven't followed that, that was a really amazing one because somebody finally managed to patent mathematics, which I applaud. The lawyers won that day, sadly, but I mean, that's life. Uh, the fun fact is that after that battle got won by Oracle, well, to some extent, uh, a bunch of open implementations came to be. Open JDK, adopt Open JDK, Hotspot, Open G9. Uh, open JDK is actually made open source by Oracle of all uh, of all kind of creators. So that's really weird story. If you have some time, to read up on it. Interesting things. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, what you need to know about the whole Java versions. If you if you code something on Java 8, if you learn something of Java 8, never fear. That thing is still going to work on all the latest ones, right? If you have something before Java 8, that might be a bit more fuzzy, but Java 8 definitely has good things going for it. Uh, all the versions after that definitely as well, right? Uh, the code that you wrote on Java 8 will work on Java 17. Maybe some adjustment might be needed if you have something really weird happening, but it's there. Uh, Embrace JEPS. JEPS is uh, Java Enhance Enhancement uh, Proposals. If you have some time and if you have some uh, like spare working opportunities at your work, just look what Java is proposing. There are interesting things happening there. Check it out, right? Uh, and we probably will have a separate version about what kind of features appear in what Java version. And I really think you should focus on like Listen to that because this is a very often uh, question that they ask in job interviews. So you might want to listen to that. Right. At, uh, so in this cl closing comments, I really like this guy who, who, who finally found the book that uh, all the guys cried while reading, and that's Data Structures and Algorithms in Java. And I'm very sincere about it because it's a really difficult book and you, it might get you to tears if you really want to understand all of it. Because at the end of the day, uh, learning language and grammar for it is really easy compared to when you start working with data structure algorithms and how to do it properly because that thing just teaches you that's the hard thing that matters right uh, boom. right and so finally I know like with, with all that said uh, I really really hope you kind of have the idea and, and motivation to learn Java and, and to do that in, in in the kind of nice company which organizes you know trainings and internships and gets you to get to that foot inside the door right uh, because that's the hardest part uh, of all the career starting points like how to get inside the door and from there you can really really move on somewhere for after that. Remember that three language number? Java being the first gets you inside the door, the others you will learn along the way. And you will probably won't, won't be able to avoid that if you really want to do something nice there. And yeah, that's the start of it. And it's not the end because I hope, I really hope you will start learning Java now. So that's why it's not called the end. And uh, Satana, I think that's about it with my presentation, so feel free to hijack the screen, and that's it. And really, so yeah, thank you. Planned. <laughs> thank you, Kazimiros. I think you really boosted our event with Java or even Swiss knife, and uh, <laughs> I think that there were a lot of <laughs> well known but very interesting facts according to your speech. And uh, especially for me, they were very interesting to look at Java from the very beginning one more time. And mm -hmm. right now, let me share our second part of our presentation and introduce our speaker. So 
our next uh, speaker will be Alek Zeliznov, and he is going to boost our skills not only with Java but within community approach. Alek is also software engineering team lead. Yeah, two team leads to our event. Uh, today's event and I think that right now it's uh, a good time to speak where you can start to learn Java, how you can start to learn Java and Alek, please go ahead and please uh, introduce uh, our idea of community school and why we think that it is a cool idea and a great place to start learning. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Sveta. Thanks for the introduction and I guess you somehow covered uh, the first part of it <laughs> very, very shortly, but nevertheless. Um, okay, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm really glad that you joined this session. Uh, as Sveta mentioned, my name is Alek Zeliznov. Now I'm a team leader at IPAM, but I've been there in your shoes eight years ago. And as a driver of MGC School, I'll present modern Java community, its services and opportunities, and specifically community school. Uh, I hope that today we'll share with you some tips and ideas on how to become a software engineer. So we are modern Java community. You might have a question, what is it and why do I need some weird community? That's a legit question. So let's try to visualize the community as a building in order to understand the benefits provided by the community better. Uh, first, uh, community as a driving force. Uh, we're really focused on building a platform for engineers networking and collaboration. We are open for any engineers working with Java technologies as well as new talents willing to connect their career with Java. Uh, community is a good place to meet like-minded people sharing the same working context and establishing a positive working culture within your teams and organization. And community is a great opportunity to get involved into various activities uh, which you may miss during your daily routine work. Next slide, please. <laughs> uh, well, community is a networking area and it is driven by engineers for engineers, specifically by experts. Uh, experts uh, are those who enable knowledge sharing uh, and production experience accumulation within a community. Uh, they are ready to support community members in resolving various issues. Uh, just do not be afraid of word experts. Depending on the topic and situation, the same person may be or may not be an expert. Uh, thankfully, Community School allows you to get acquainted and meet various people, uh, which basically means you will meet various experts. Uh, OK, so experts are a good thing, but what does it give to students? The answer is pretty simple. You may ask for help. Uh, during your education, you'll receive various formats of experts help. Um, and uh, for those who have some experience in Java, if you have something to share and you want to become a speaker for any topic of interest or contribute to us in some other ways, you are also more than welcome to contact me or some of our speakers today. Uh, so next. Uh, flexibility, uh, sorry, not next, previous slide. <laughs> uh, flexibility and agility and efficient education as a staple. That's a core principle of uh, MGC school. Uh, and education with us means a great opportunity to start your career in Java. Uh, we count on you as a future member of MGC who one day will help other students will speak here, being in my Casimiras, Svetas or other speakers shoes. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, we respect no borders, so MGC school is also a great chance to meet and get acquainted uh, with people from various countries and cultures and start your networking. Uh, uh, why did I even speak about it? Our school's content was created by real engineers who work on various projects and domains across the world. And that guarantees that you'll get cutting edge materials and your knowledge will be up to date to modern demands. 
so let's probably do a quick summary of what we have learned about community at this point. Uh, first, uh, we are online and we provide a self-paced education flow. That means that uh, you can set your own pace, you can pass our course after work or the study or at any spare time you, you may found and that's basically a huge, huge benefit. Uh, actual content and tasks designed by production engineers. Again, real engineers involvement guarantees that you'll get tasks and study materials that matches modern demands. Uh, community support, chat and communications. Mm, that means that uh, you won't be on your own when you face any issues. You'll get all the support required. Uh, you'll get uh, mentored on the later stages. And uh, as a result, that's also a networking area. Uh, as I already mentioned, community is a great place to start networking. Uh, and one day when you'd like uh, to seek opportunities uh, or have to build a team, networking will help you a lot. Uh, it is also uh, a great chance to get a skill set which allows you to become a junior software engineer. Uh, and I would be, I, I would also say that it also grants you with the potential to grow really, really quick. Uh, from my experience. <laughs> uh, and uh, of course, since we collaborate uh, really close with uh, EPAMS training center, uh, it also means that we might be able to offer some of you employment options. Uh, but I would like to be uh, really uh, truthful here. Uh, remember that a possible job offer depends on your location, on current demands, on really, really many variables. So uh, at least I cannot guarantee, unfortunately. So now when we are finished with uh, community, its benefits, uh, main benefits, uh, let's talk a little bit about structure of the school stages and processes we have. Uh, let's start with the benefits of MGC school and why you should choose us. Uh, first one is that our education is online. Uh, it was somehow mentioned already, but nevertheless, um, it is available from any location at any time uh, and flexibility is definitely a huge advantage. Uh, it is free for everyone. Unlike many others of our competitors, uh, we demand no charge for our education, for our courses. Um, and since it is based on community principles, it means that we are public and open source. Everyone can join and everything you need is to be injected with programming and favor Java as your primary language. Uh, next two are connected. That's production mentoring and experienced mentors uh, during stage four an engineer who works on some project uh, will become your mentor. Uh, that would be covered a little bit later today. Uh, in general, this is a great opportunity to learn from an experienced person and make yourself visible for projects and teams who might be willing to hire a new talent. Uh, and the last but not the least, that's professional opportunities. Our education is a great chance to get a job offer. Uh, as the skills you'll get during the course are more than enough to be a skilled junior. Uh, so you've already heard about some stages and probably had the chance to get acquainted with them on our landing page. Um, and I think that some of you already started with stage zero. In total, we have uh, five stages. That's fundamentals, core, web, modern frameworks, and enterprise. Uh, I'm not gonna stick to each of them. Uh, we have other speakers to cover this topic. Uh, in general, we consider passing through these stages crucial to get a good balanced skill set, including both uh, some fundamental things like servlets, uh, 
across with uh, modern frameworks, DevOps practices, and UI from frameworks. In fact, this is where more than Java comes in. And that basically means that uh, you may be uh, something which is called T-shape engineer uh, today, or a full stack developer uh, who can easily grow in various ways. Uh, so next, uh, let's talk a little bit about tools we use. Uh, at least three of them are our main. Uh, first one is AutoCode. Again, I believe that some of you already had the chance to get acquainted with it. Uh, and AutoCode is a great tool uh, which helps both you and us. Uh, its main purpose is to automatically run tests over the code you write, uh, but it also allows us to provide you with study materials in a convenient way. Uh, during uh, stage zero, model two, uh, you'll get a task to learn how to use AutoCode and write your first Hello World Java app. Uh, at the same time, AutoCode also demands some other skills to be used and uh, to be learned. For instance, that's a Git. Uh, Git is something you will deal with on a regular basis once you're on some, some project. <laughs> Uh, AutoCode also provides a scoring system, but do not be afraid of it. Uh, the only purpose of scoring uh, is to be your landmark on your current progress. This is not used uh, by us to prefer one student over another. Uh, next, GitHub. GitHub uh, is a single point of MGC school where you can find all study materials and some details about our school. Uh, it is also used to store all the tasks and information for mentors. Uh, well, in fact, it might be used by students in various ways. Um, just let's imagine one of them. Uh, uh, imagine that uh, you completed the stage really quick in the several days, let's say so. Uh, that means you would have to wait a little bit until we make the next stage available. Uh, but you can still go to our GitHub and start learning without further delay. Uh, and the next one is a Slack chat. That's a central point of our communication. Uh, if you are still not a part of it, please join as soon as possible. You may see a QR code here. Uh, this is the place where you can discuss solutions, ask for help, or provide a feedback to us uh, in case something went wrong or you have some ideas on how we can improve. Uh, I would uh, also like to note that uh, we use English as a communication language uh, since we do have students and contributors from many locations. Uh, and uh, well, before I pass the turn to the next speaker, uh, I'd like to highly encourage all of you to enroll in the training program. And I hope to see new faces as active members of MGC community. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you, Alec. Uh, I think uh, now it is uh, clear what we mean when we are talking about MGC school, when we are talking about community. And uh, moreover, I think uh, right now you had a chance to meet several community school drivers. I mean, Kazimiras, Alec, and so on. And our next part uh, of our presentation uh, will help you to make a deep dive and to see details from each educational stage. And I would like to introduce our next speakers, Alexey, Danila, Jana and Maria. They are software engineers with huge uh, number of years of production experience and they are key drivers from community school. They are mentors, they are content authors. So I think you will enjoy their description for each stage. But uh, one more point, please pay attention that we also have Q&A section in our presentation and you can ask your questions. I saw a lot of questions for Kazimiras part of presentation. Also, please add questions to Alec 
part of presentation and for our next speakers. And later in uh, our event, we've held, we will have a special time slot to answer these questions. So please go ahead. And let me introduce our uh, first speaker from this part. It's Alexey. Alexey, please start your journey. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is, as you already know, is Alexey, and I will introduce you the zero stage of our program. Uh, so during two months of this stage, you will become familiar with the infrastructure and tools which you will use through all the program and also in your future career path. Moreover, here you will get some basic knowledge about the programming concepts, which will prepare foundation for the upcoming models. Some of them will be related to Java and some are more general. And all they will help you to understand better how to organize your work uh, about Java. Basic definitions, uh, operations, and of course your first simple program will be created here, but this model will not limit you only with simple solutions. Step by step, you will learn how to run more and more complicated programming structures and also how to organize these structures and in which optimal way can they communicate. Starting from easy branching or cycles for repeatable parts or algorithms, you will move to more complex implementations. And at the end of the model, you will know how to design real world in Java language in a, an optimal way. And here I would like to pass the ball to the next speaker. Danila, it's your turn. Uh, yes, yeah. hello everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Daniela. I've been working in Nepal for three and a half years. Uh, also, for the last two years, uh, I worked with uh, MGC School. And before I started working here, I finished uh, mentoring that became the foundation of this school. So I basically was in your shoes uh, a few years ago. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, the stage number one to you. Uh, yeah. It's expected uh, to take you two months to complete two. The format is mostly the same as for stage uh, zero. It's a self-paced online studying with uh, practical tasks. Uh, but uh, on the stage one, we will have a new activity. These are light talks, uh, short lectures on a particular topic uh, by the engineers from production. Uh, during that stage, you will continue digging into Java core uh, technologies. Uh, you will study strings, collections, exceptions, uh, file handling, and uh, concurrent uh, programming. All these topics are used in daily programming and can be reused uh, in other programming languages. Uh, after completing uh, that stage, uh, you'll understand all basic Java core concepts and you'll be able to develop uh, more complex applications. Uh, that's probably it from my side. And next I pass the word to Jana. Yeah, Jana, please uh, take your chance to introduce stage number two and three. Two stages goes for you. Hello, my name is Jana and I'm a senior software engineer at IPAM. I participated in the second stage creation and coordinated in the third stage, so I would talk about them. Second stage is about web. Uh, here you firstly um, learn and get some practice about Git and build tools and after that study web, HTTP and Java EE servlets. Then you study SQL, so the basic things about creating tables, writing queries, using different conditions and aggregators. And in the end, you will study architectural patterns and engineering best practices. So this stage will take you one month, but after that time, you will be able to develop uh, web applications based on servlets and use built and version control tools and following best practices, which is really nice. The second stage is about switch the screenplays. The second stage is about modern frameworks. Here you get acquainted with development approaches and techniques. Actually, in this stage, you will write a solid Spring application with ORM access to the database, write REST endpoints to access your application, and even enable a swagger. 
uh, in the stage all practical tasks go in cascade mode so every next practical task will be the extension from the previous which help you to build one application with all mentioned frameworks and techniques this stage will take you two months and of course you will have a theoretical materials about, about every new technology and development approach and except of that you will also have a consultants to which you may ask all your questions regarding tasks and understanding of some technology and here you also will have a roasting sessions it's a sessions where several students and expert gathering together and expert asking a theoretical questions to the students so this will help you to pay more attention to theoretical knowledge and dig dive that's it about these two stages thank you um, going the, doing giving the word to maria yeah, Maria, please take your time to introduce the last stage and more difficult stage to my mind. Okay, thank you, Jana. Thank you, Svetlana. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, my name is Maria. Uh, I have more than eight years production experience in Java and Kotlin software development, um, both backend and front end. And I'm a coordinator of the last stage in school that's called Enterprise. Uh, so why it's called enterprise and how it differs from all the previous ones. Uh, so the first, uh, this stage implies individual or group mentoring. Uh, engineers from production will not only instruct and help you learn advanced technologies, frameworks and modern engineers tools, but also share their real experience and best practices. Uh, so next, uh, you will improve your knowledge in frameworks and technologies, which are almost 100% uh, used in real projects. Uh, as part of this stage, uh, you will deepen your knowledge in Spring technologies, uh, implement an authentication and authorization mechanism in your application uh, using Spring security. Uh, you will study what is the continuous integration and continuous delivery, uh, get acquainted with AWS and UI technologies. And as for the UI, in addition to such basic things uh, like HTML and JavaScript, uh, you will implement a UI for your service uh, using modern frameworks such as React or Angular. Uh, also, as part of this stage, uh, we will have a series of roasting battles and light talks that plan for a more detailed coverage of the theoretical part. Uh, stage takes approximately two months. Uh, upon completion of this stage, you will have a sufficient knowledge to join by the company as a junior software engineer. Uh, this is uh, all from my side. And now I'd like to pass it on to Vladimir, who will share his story, how be he became a junior specialist. Thank you. Yeah, th th thank you, Masha, Jana, thank you, Danila, Alexei. And uh, I think it's time to introduce uh, our next speaker, Vladimir. And I think his story will be very interesting and also very, very close to everyone who is listening to our event right now. So, Vladimir, please start with your story. Hi everyone, my name is Vladimir and I'm working at EPAM as a junior Java software developer. My journey of becoming a programmer started at university, where I have studied computer science and got bachelor's degree on it. After my graduation, I was really struggling to find a job here in Lithuania. Each employer asked me to have a strong programming background or even simply just ignored my job applications. One day when I scrolled through job offers, I found out EPAM's MGC school, which offered a further possibility to employ in this company. I took a chance, applied, and then boom, at the next day I got a call from one of the representatives. And after a short English language knowledge check, I was accepted for those courses. At first stages, we learned some Java basics. It was not that hard for me since I learned Java language at university. But even though it was useful at the same time, if comparing to studying at uni, 
no one there explained me how I should code in Java correctly. For example, you learn a new language using only dictionary. Yes, you learn how to translate words, but uh, know nothing about the language rules and structure. At MGC school, teachers explain you every aspect, providing examples of how everything should be impl implemented correctly. Since they are not professors, they are experienced industry workers, and they know what should what you should really know about the programming. Also, comparing to study at any educational institution, uh, here at MGC school, you will have no competition with other students. You can always ask your teacher or other students how to complete the tasks. Uh, since here the grade is not that important, unlike your understanding. The most useful were the next stages when EPAM provide you with an individual mentor who has a very strong experience in uh, of working in industry. When you do your task uh, and don't understand how to implement something, they can always give you a hint, provide an example or give a links to some reading materials. Also, even if you done something and it's working as you expected they'll they will review your solution and explain how you can implement it in the better easier way how they will do the same thing uh, on real world project since they prepare you for working in industry as a recommendation for everyone never hesitate to ask something it's always better to have a short call with your mentor and get a solution to your issue instead of wasting time uh, and get no result out of, out of it. And so after completing all of the stages, I was invited to take a job interview on one of the EPAM projects. And now I'm a part of a big IT company and can consider it as a lucky ticket. That's it from my side. I'd like to pass the word to Edgaras, who also learned with me at NGC. Yeah, thank you, Vladimir. And it's really a great story that first of all, you were student. Right now you are our colleague and moreover, you are one of the key members at our community. And I hope that our students, uh, future students can meet you in Slack chat and now you will be able to support them also and help them to start learning. So we have one more story and please welcome Edgaras, who is also our colleague and community school member. Please Edgaras, start with your story. Thank you, Svetlana. So hello everyone. My name is Edgaras and with the help of MGC school, now I'm working as a Java programmer and I want to tell my story. Uh, I got acquainted with a programming at school when uh, at computer science lesson I wrote a hello world in Pascal. <laughs> yes, I'm so old. Uh, after school life started spinning and I went down a completely different path. I chose a civil engineering and uh, worked it well, uh, for about seven years. Everything would be fine, but uh, the feeling that I was not in my place uh, did not believe me. Uh, and occasionally I return into a programming, uh, reading all sorts of articles and going through programming tutorials. After many years of thinking in my uh, 30s, I decided to change everything and became a programmer. Mm. I chose a Java as it was very popular programming language, language and were a plenty of good quality tutorials on the internet. After a year of diligent study of Java, I could write a simple web application on the Spring framework and even attach Spring security to it. Uh, I knew how to use a Git and how to write a simple SQL queries. So I started seeking job opportunities. Java position interview was tough uh, and after a couple of dozen failures, I could not understand what was wrong with me. 
uh, everything changed after interview at the pump. Uh, of course, I valued this interview too. <laughs> uh, but we were the first to write a very accurate description of my knowledge and uh, my entire interview. Also, I was offered to participate in MGC school, where I could improve my shortcomings. I, of course, agreed, and it was cool. Uh, in about uh, four or five months, I learned more about Java than in the entire year of study. In MGC, I went deeper into working with Git, acquired a huge amount of theoretical knowledge of Java, and also gained a lot of experience in practice. Uh, all this time, um, all this time, I was accompanied and helped by my personal mentor, uh, who answered all my questions. After the training, I realized that before MGC, I basically uh, knew nothing. Now I'm working as a junior Java programmer at the IPAM, and I can definitely say that my path in programming is just beginning. So thank you and good luck. We will join MGC school. Thank you, Edgaros, and I hope that later we can see you also in our chats in our school helping other students. So, yeah, thank you. Let's move uh, to our next slide, and I think it's time to our Q&A session, and I saw that we already have uh, a lot of questions, so I'll ask our speakers to answer these questions and help me with answering these questions. So if my memory um, uh, serves me right, our first questions goes to Kazimiros. Kazimiros, are you ready to describe your uh, starting point yeah. why you choose Java? I guess the first one might be applicable like this, why they choose Java might be applicable to others as well, but I can start. Uh, so basically, I joined a company which were do, who who are doing Java because I think I my Java journey started right after the university, and at that time I literally knew very comparable level of Java, C plus plus, C sharp, and this thing called I guess I'm God I forgot the name of that language. Uh, it was not. Delphi, yeah, this was, I think it was called Delphi or something like that, R really old one. It's kind of like Pascal, but with uh, some kind of UI elements and whatnot, so really weird languages, right? So it's kind of like you join a company, they do Java, you do start doing Java as well, and it goes from there. So, um, and that time was really a Java, Java boom, to say the least, so. That also participates in that choice too. I know maybe somebody else wants to share why they joined the Java train as well. Colleagues, please uh, show 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 your stories, show your skeletons. <laughs> maybe Alek, why you choose Java? You, right? Why did you choose Java? <laughs> uh, well, I think that I can proceed. Uh, the story is pretty short. Uh, that was my main focus at university, so uh, I didn't really have a chance to try something else uh, before I was hired uh, by IPA. So, Java. <laughs> and the choice was made for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and by the way, Alek, can you we touch you with the next question also? Is Java easy to learn for a beginner? Can you remember your feelings? Uh, well, uh, I'm not really sure if Java is really easy to learn, but I can say that at university we started with C++ uh, and plain C. And uh, well, I was actually unable to write a linked list at my first year at university. That was really making me struggle. Uh, in Java, that uh, that stuff, that kind of stuff, is pretty much easier uh, since uh, you don't have to manage your memory manually. And uh, moreover, I would say I'm not really sure what is the actual. Uh, status, but I would say that in Java you have more uh, more manuals, more instructions on how to do something. So 
probably yes, Java is a good uh, good language to start with. Again, but is it? Yeah, <laughs> I can add, add this question. Like. The general consensus on the internet, because like I did that when I was trying to, to prepare for my speech, is that uh, probably Python or some other scripting languages are easier to learn, but that is uh, basically due to the, I would say, due to the nature of, of, of how they work with variables. For example, Java is really picky about types. Other languages are not so picky, right? So like, namely Python, for example. Java requires you to put uh, semicolons everywhere, right? Python doesn't, but then it has its own weird things for flow control. Uh, so uh, learning Java as a beginner, maybe it's not the easiest way to go, but I think it was, it's definitely one of the best ways to go. And the best ways is uh, not because, you know, you kind of, you, you know how to write a program, but because there's a really big market for for, for people to jump into and step into. And the, at the same time, as mentioned before, there's really a lot of materials during the years and a lot of quality materials to learn from, right? As opposed to other languages might struggle in that area. So it's, I would say it's one of the easier ones, not definitely not the easiest, but then there are different perks, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you, colleagues. And let's move uh, to the next questions. We have two very close questions. Maybe, Kazimir, you can uh, answer briefly. The first question is about Java popularity. Is it increasing or decreasing? And the um, second question is uh, three languages uh, in backend or mix front end and backend. I think it's about uh, mm -hmm. one slide, yeah, in your mm -hmm. presentation. Yeah, yeah, so about the uh, popularity increase. So as I mentioned, probably didn't really communicate that well about the whole popularity thing. Um, sim simply said, if you if you use those metrics, uh, Java's popularity is, uh, I think, uh, decreasing right now. It's like it's decreasing slash stabilizing, I would I would call. Again, keep in mind two things that I pr really probably failed to communicate there. This is based on open materials, right? So that's like one this, this that well-known TOB index, right? And this, this is basically how much people are searching for it. And like if you, if you check, for example, last year and this year, like actually Java increased. If you check like five or six years ago, Java was way higher than it is now. So uh, there are, you know, nooks and crannies and ups and downs there. Uh, what you should really focus about Java is that there is a really, really big thing already going with it. And the, jo the whole Java ecosystem as such, it underwent a significant change with the uh, that Oracle and Google battle. With the new open Java implement, uh, JTK implementations and Java implementations as such, a very significant amount of changes and, and the whole community involvement changed, right? So for example, as this uh, periodic version releases with uh, enhancement proposals. People take good things from other languages and they just adopt them to Java and this is happening and this is what developers love and use and abuse and I think you should be on that train because you can find all those uh, bells and whistles appearing in Java by the time you actually get to program something there, right? And at the same time, like I will risk to to kind of appear like a COBOL programmer here because I will say that there's a long story with Java and it's here for a reason after all those 30 years. There's a plenty of languages which died in a lot shorter time and Java is here for a reason and I think it's going to stay here, right? So, and then moving fluently to the next question about the three languages, as I said, Java is an exceptionally good first language to learn because it covers a bunch of different domains and it's a good entry point to those domains. So if you, for example, want to do mobile development, Java got you covered. You want to do desktop development, got you covered. Definitely tools for that. Backend, absolutely no questions asked. Definitely has the means to do coding in the best patterns and best uh, tooling that you can find in backend, right? So, but as, as to, so is this one of the languages that I would learn right now if I didn't know any? Definitely, yes. Absolutely, yes. If I want to fo focus on backend heavily, I would probably mix that with Python and maybe C Sharp if I want to focus completely on backend. Maybe I put in something like Scala instead of C++ or, or C Sharp. 
instead what it's like scale is complicated comparatively so it's it's a i would say you need to kind of learn how languages work before you go there uh, plus it's functional right so it, like if you are not across that bridge yet you have to get across it yet but if i had to pick three languages right now to learn i would learn java i would learn typescript javascript and then i would do something for scripting so it might be python might be something like uh how it's called not rust but uh ruby something like that probably so roughly speaking if i had to learn front end back end and something scripting or go for example yeah for scripting goes go is also a good good choice for, for for doing kind of build scripts and whatnot because like if you're a good developer, if you become a senior engineer and you don't know how your build environments work and you don't know how to read your Go scripts or some other build scripts, again, you're doing something wrong and probably you're hitting the ceiling in your career, right? So you don't want that. So I guess I hope that's answered the question, at least from my perspective. Yeah, uh, thank you, Kazimiras. And uh, I, I think we have not uh, enough time to answer probably all questions but i would like to um, uh, repeat the most interesting and i think questions and the next questions goes to our drivers to our mgc core team so can students be dismissed from mgc school and one more question how mgc is different from java mentoring courses yeah and some link provided to learn platform courses so probably colleagues from our team alec uh, who can answer about dismissing from mgc uh i think well uh i have to pick one i i i guess uh Probably Maria has some experience with dismissing students and she may share why students were dismissed and what was the reason. Uh, OK, uh, regarding the uh, first stages, because uh, uh, it's uh, in majority cases self passed, uh, I think we do not have like dismissal for students, but um, uh, regarding the mentoring stage, um, uh, yes, um, for each task we have a strong deadline and uh, in general uh, the deadline should, should not be missed, uh, but um, um, uh, we can um, we can update uh, this deadline for uh, for students for some uh, reasons, but for uh, very very strong reasons like uh, some illness or I don't know any other cases yeah uh, but uh, yes I think for for the last stages uh, uh, students can be dismissed uh, without any uh, strong uh, reasons yeah, thank you, Maria. And uh, I think I can add some um, information. So the answer on this question uh, depends on the stage. Yeah, uh, first stages are simple and uh, there is no needness to pass any tests uh, or some to take some exams to start learning. But um, when you will be close to the stage number three or four and when uh, school will provide mentor, we will, we will stop education in case if you will not be able to uh, co uh, come with tasks in time. But uh, on the first stage, it depends on student. You can study a very long period of time or you can be very quick with your stages. And one more question concerning the education flow is uh, how MGC is different from Java mentoring. So Java mentoring courses are different. Uh, in some courses you will be provided with mentor from the very beginning, but in MGC school you will be studying on your own and use community environment. What does it mean? It means that uh, you will have chat and a huge number of engineers who will help you at any time and with different approaches to resolve your problems. So it's not mentoring, it's just community way of uh, discussing what you are learning and why. 
And uh, uh, one more question. Is there some experience knowledge needed for this course or it is for complete beginners? It also depends on the stage and I think the role stage is for beginners. Maybe Alexei, can you please help us with answering this question? Is it for beginners? Or maybe Alec? Can you hear me now? Yeah, can hear you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as I've said, this, this is zero stage is definitely for the beginners. It will uh, give all the needed information to proceed with the, with the program. Of course, you you should have some basic knowledge. Oh, sorry, I should turn on the camera. Uh, you should have some basic knowledge on how to operate with your uh, laptop or PC, uh, but the rest uh, information will be provided. Uh, if you have some computer basics uh, either at the university or at school and then okay maybe not in school but in, at university for example it is enough to start uh, and yeah it is enough to join our community and become a, a developer in the nearest future Thank you so much. And one more question is about uh, jumping from stage to stage or jumping to the last stage at IC. Yeah, is MGC school worth uh, the time for an IT student or should I maybe make a small project with trial and error and try to get junior position this way? Who can help us to answer? Is it possible to jump to the job offer at once? <laughs> or we need to start from the very beginning? Uh, I think that I can answer this question. Uh, well, uh, basically you can try uh, everything and I would say that each approach might have or might not have its own benefits, uh, but um, in when it comes to MGC school, I would say it definitely worth the time for an IT student uh, as it offers the unique opportunity to work together with uh, a real engineer from production who will share uh, his or her experience. And uh, this is an amazing experience uh, for you as a student or intern or junior uh, to learn, um, to study something new and uh, probably make yourself visible since um, I guess you can understand that if this engineer works on some of the projects, the project might be hiring at this moment. So I guess the question is answered. Yeah, thank you, Alec. And we have one more question, which is very close to previous. So generally, how long does it take to be at the level where you can start searching for job in Java, junior intern level? What usually are the minimum requirements that are asked when applying at junior intern level jobs? But this de depends a lot from where you're starting. I mean, some people already starting like with, with the university degree, for example, or master's degree, right? And they just know things from there, right? So they can, I mean, maybe they won't have the practice to do some development, but they know things, they know how to find things, how to learn, right? So they are good to go, right? If you're learning from scratch, well, I would say a very good starting point is when you can do all the easy to medium tasks in some website called hacker rank or something similar where you can where you generally not afraid of coding and know all the algorithm algorithms plus you had the opportunity to watch some conference speech or like speeches about different topics so that you know what's actually right now in the industry like CIC how CICD works how git works right how I don't know like basic patterns of architecture are organized stuff like that but it's like it's a very wide topic and really hard to answer without knowing where you're starting with. Like I me mean, personally, I do a lot of job interviews right now. And every time I speak to a person, he has a different feedback of what he what I would learn in his or her situation if I would like to be hired in a better 
better conditions, right? So it's, it's a really complicated thing to answer without knowing specifics. I hope that at least somewhat covers that. And if someone else wants to add something. Um, I think I can add that uh, probably this question is closer to the duration of our stages. Yeah, right now we put uh, that each stage should uh, be about two months. Yeah, or some shorter period of time. But uh, we mentioned that education will be self passed and it depends on students. You can spend two months for the for zero stage if needed, or you can um, solve task tasks quicker. So it depends uh, on your initial level. And let me see whether we have uh, more questions. Um, so about experience knowledge, we already answered. How long it takes, we already answered. And I see two questions concerning uh, to join using Slack link from stage zero and get message that this link is no longer active. I'll share QR code a little bit later and I think if we have some uh, problems with links we will update them soon after our event so don't worry and please uh, try to use a link or QR code from uh, my next slide. So um, one moment I'll share it and I think we are done with all questions for today. Please join us in our chat and proceed to answer to ask questions or to answer if you have answers because we are community. We are open for everybody and. Let me. Uh, share how to join links. One moment. So can you see my presentation and slide with how to join one moment? Oh, now we are here. Can you see this slide? I think yes. So please uh, use our landing page mgc.school to find all necessary links to our GitHub repository, to our AutoCode course and to our Slack chat. And also here I put I put it uh, QR code to join Slack chat. I hope that this link will work. We checked it in the morning and everything was OK. So uh, also please join us in LinkedIn GitHub repository. You can find actual links at our landing page mgc.school and I think it's time to thank you everyone for joining. Thank you our speakers. Thank you our listeners and attendees. Thank you for your interest and questions and we are really waiting for you to study uh, learning Java and to become a part of our community. So I hope we can meet soon.